Hey there, good to see you again. Glad you're back. I thought I would talk to you about the differences in plate character and how that affects um, your resulting print. The plate that I used uh, previously in my proofing demos has areas in which the original thickness of the plate has wide um, line widths and the deep areas where I carved, they're kind of tightly situated with one another. So when I take the brayer across it, those original heights hold the brayer up from dropping into the negative space. My new plate, by comparison, it has similar highs and lows, but there's really a big space between the height of this line describing the side of the thumb and then the interior curve of the leg. So my little brayer is probably going to be dropping into those negative spaces. So I'm going to have to plan for that. Also, my print is going to look different because in this area of my plate, I'm using a lot of small, uh, thin line widths to define difference in patterning and also difference in value. So it will have a different sort of printing um, characteristic than the previous plate. So I am going to talk to you about addressing the drop problem. So when I take my brayer across, if I were going to go this direction, you could see that my little brayer is going to drop down into all of my negative space. I don't really want that to happen. So I'm going to create a little buttress that will hold my brayer up um, on this side. So if we were in the lab, we would have had another piece of linoleum. And if you happen to have a piece of linoleum, you could use it to buttress up against the side of your plate. But I don't have one. So what I did was used um, part of this paper bag. I cut a piece. I don't know, that's roughly 12 inches by 8 inches. And then I, how did I do this? I folded it. I don't remember how I folded it exactly. And probably into eight little accordion-like folds. I took my trusty drawer pull and I squished it flat. So it's pretty consistent in thickness. And now I can lay this to the side and it's basically the same material thickness as my plate. So to make sure this doesn't spring apart while I'm inking up, I cut a piece of tape. So this is that packing tape that we were using earlier on to tape together our plastic bags. Now I'm gonna fold over this edge and now I've got a sealed piece of, what's that called? Paper bag. All right, so that's going to be my, my little buttress to hold up the brayer as I cruise across the plate. So we're going to try this out and see what happens. All right, so I got that puppy ready. Got my brayer. I've got my gloves. Got my drawer pole. And I've got my paper nearby because we're going to print this puppy. So. Earlier today we met and I told you to please make rubbings of your plates so you can see what's happening while you're carving. And you're going to get to a point again where you need to see really what's happening in terms of the black and whites of your image. This was my kind of misfit ink bomb from our previous session. So I'm going to use my knife. I'm going to cut off the end of my ink bomb. Got my little garbage bag there. And again, I don't need a lot of ink. So I'm just kind of dabbing the end of my ink bomb against the acrylic sheet. Gonna move that over here. Gonna grab my palette knife. And it's just like a good friend. I guess it's pre-COVID, but kinda go ahead and squish it like a handshake, a happy handshake because we don't have any oil, by you squishing it, it's kind of loosening up those little oil molecules so they're a little bit more relaxed. So I'm gonna scoot this here. Got my other puppy, AKA acrylic sheet. 
cut out my ink. And again, I roll away from myself, come back, lift, and it should spin a bit. And you can always turn your little acrylic sheet the other way around to help even out your field of ink. And again, you want to have a nice glisteny pattern to your rolled out field of ink. If you're getting black freckles and it's smacking at you, that's too much. If it's not making any noise, that's too little. If it looks matte, that also means it's too little amount of ink. You can do what I just did, put a little bit more out. All right, so it looks like it's pretty evenly inked out here on the acrylic sheet. Now I'm gonna come over to my plate. <gasps> so exciting. I'm gonna take my little buttressy guy. And I'm gonna roll. Whoa. Ah, see where it dropped in? Dang it. Dang it, nab it. No, I say dead nab it. So I'm not pressing really hard. Just enough pressure to get my brayer to roll across the surface of the plate. And remember that, so you can kind of see, can you see the width, this side, the height here, and the height of my line? So this puppy is going to drop into my negative space. That's kind of cool. That's definitely going to be happening. So I'm going to accept that characteristic of inking my plate with a really small little brayer. If and when we get back to the print shop, we will have access to bigger brayers and we wouldn't have these same sort of inking patterns. It would be slightly different. So now I'm going to take my little buttressy guy and I'm going to put it along the bottom to help hold that up. And can you tell the texture? If you take a look at this, see how it's not as glistening? It's starting to look matte. That means it's hungry. So you're going to scoop up a bit more of that relief ink and scrape some as a round over this puppy. And again, if you roll your ink out evenly on your acrylic sheet, you are going to have a much more evenly inked plate. So you're kind of, as always, you're trying to control the variables. It's your decision about how you're handling all these materials. Now I'm coming over here. And we all know this, the kind of turny plate on the edge. It's kind of got a bow. So I'm tilting my brayer to help feed that. Again, it's just enough pressure to get my brayer to roll. I'm going to turn my plate. This stuff is sticky. I'm going to recharge. And now we know that we want to have the same sort of glistening ink appearance as we do on the inking slab. So I'm going to give this a try. So I'm moving this over. I grab my registration template. I put down my plate. And I'm going to grab a piece of proofing paper. I always pick that one, which I don't like. up here, the edge, drop it down, and I'm going to use my rice paddly spoon. And I'm using the wider one here because I do want to bridge the gap between the original height of my linoleum because I don't want to really 
push super heavily down into the negative space. Those areas, I should say, that I carved away largely. All right, and then you know we always peek. So there's that, um, what's it called, salting? So I know I've missed a few spots, so I can lay it back down. And I just need to slow down a little bit. Take a look again. Getting there. So that's with just that wooden paddle. If I want blacks, I come in with my little drawer pull and I use these semicircular motions that overcast one another. <coughs> Excuse me. And so this is the part I was telling you earlier about. Is because you're hand printing, you may decide that you just want one section of your image to have really saturated black. And so you would use the drawer pull over those areas while leaving the others um, alone. So I want to get my bear's foot. Hang on one second with me. Feet are important to me. That's a good proof. There's my plate. And now you are ready to do the cleanup if you'd like. Or if you felt like you just wanted to do some tweaking, you could put paper down, grab your U gouge, and start carving small amounts of information away. Wipe it away with a rag, and then go ahead and ink up and pull another print. I'm going to go in and do some carving over here, <clears throat> and I'm gonna do some more carving in the bear to increase the contrast between it and this crazy negative shape behind it. Thank you.